Hi, I'm Lena. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another book haul. Boy took his summer holiday quite early this year, so we went places and we of course visited quite a lot of bookstores, which means it is already time for another book haul, even though I showed you quite a few new books in a recent vlog. I also got some AdSense money this month, which means I was able to get a few more books than I usually get, so a big thank you to all of you for watching my videos and making a big part of this book haul possible. <laughs> I was really looking for some specific books to buy when I went to the bookstores and of course living in the Netherlands the English section is not as big as it would be like in the UK or the US so I had to order a few books online because I couldn't find them. I'm quite happy to say that I also got a few secondhand books which makes me very happy. There is definitely a clear theme in this book haul. If you can distill the theme of the book haul please leave it in a comment down below. I would love to see how you would classify it. But let's start with the first bookstore I went to and that is a secondhand bookstore that focuses a lot on travel and different places and I got a secondhand illustrated um, edition of Aesop's Fables. I will show you the illustration. It's very adorable and the right amount of creepy as well. As you can see they are very very short and I just really loved this edition. It says that he lived um, around the 6th century before Christ so these are really really old and I would love to read them and see how they are like kind of used in modern literature. But I mainly just really liked this adorable edition. So that is actually the only book I got from that bookstore because I don't usually really read a lot of non-fiction about travel but he also had a section with English classics and I almost brought home a Thomas Hardy but then I corrected myself and I was like I have almost all my Thomas Hardy in the old Penguin paperbacks so let's keep that trend going. <laughs> so I just got this one from that bookstore. A few days later we went to another bookstore and this is just our local bookstore. They have a nice English section but I'm always slightly disappointed when I go there because don't really add a lot of new books and I thought it was quite strange how little new releases they had but they do have I'm just opening a really cute bookmark because they have a lot of just bookish things and gifts and which I really love in that store and I got this bookmark with a rabbit on it but I thought I would get another one and this is one with a horse. I love horses. Nora, my cat, ate this one <laughs> from the other bookmark so I hope this one survives. I really love them, they're like really thick and nice. Um, but I also got two books from that bookstore and one I bought for a future vlog but that is Eva Under the Sun by Agatha Christie. This is one of the later Pro books and I have not read a lot of Agatha Christie but I have heard people say that this is a good early one and I think it is set during the summer so I will probably read it this summer. I think it is about people on holiday and of course there is a murder that happens and Pro is going to solve it. I don't know if Agatha Christie is for me but cozy mystery sounds so great I just want to keep on trying until I find like my sweet spot and then I got another one I have been seeing a lot around that is the wedding by Dorothy West Dorothy West was an author who was part of the Harlem Renaissance and I really like literature from that art group I really like their modernist writing style and the topics they write about and I think this is set in the 1950s we have the Coles family who gathers for the wedding of its loveliest daughter it says through a delicate interweaving of past and present north and south, black and white, the wedding unfolds outward from a single isolated time and place until it embraces five generations of an American family. This sounds really great, it's not that big. I think I'm really going to love it but I mainly picked it up because I really like this edition and I also really like these spines. Can you see these? Yes, I have a few out here so I always like to have certain editions and expand them on my shelves. <laughs> Yesterday I went to the bookstore that I go to a lot because it's an English bookstore and I got some secondhand books again. First they have a lot of bookish stuff from Bookishly UK as you can see right here and they got a lot of cute postcards. It's a mortar one, the Emerald City from the Wizard of Oz. We have Wonderland, Pemberley from Pride and Prejudice, which of course is my favorite. And we got Neverland from Peter Pan and Narnia, the mortar one. I will definitely send to Lucy when I have a chance to send her a postcard. I really like the stuff that Bookishly does, but uh, since Brexit it's kind of difficult to get stuff from the UK and Europe. So I'm really happy when stores have them. And then I got three secondhand books from them. One book 
that has been on my TBR, like my audiobook TBR for a while and I just never listened to it. So when I saw a secondhand physical copy, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to see if I can actually read it physically because I don't know, some books you just prefer to read physically. And that is a historical fiction, The Confessions of Franny Langton. I think the hype of this was years and years ago, but it is a historical fiction. It has some mystery in it. It is female based, like female based historical fiction is basically all I need to know and I will pick it up. It is set just before the Victorian era in London. We follow a maid called Franny Langton and she is on trial for murder and it says the testimonies against her are damning, slave, whore, seductress, and they may be the truth but they may not be the whole truth. Sounds fascinating. I found just my next Shakespeare. I don't know what this is about but this is The Merchant of Venice by William Shakespeare. Just another Shakespeare play. I am making my way through Shakespeare plays whenever the mood strikes me and we are doing a 24-hour readathon very soon so I might pick this up then because we are doing a classic based theme. The information on that readathon is on my community page that you can find when you go to my channel. You can click the tab community and you can join if you would like to. This is one of Shakespeare's comedies and it's a lot about money and debt, so um, we'll see. <laughs> and a book I was really glad to find because I had it on my wish list and it's like this big series that I think I would really love. And that is The Light Years by Elizabeth Jane Howard. I'm not sure if you can see, but this is an edition with the first three books, which is such a find. Um, I think this is about a family of four brothers. We have the Chatelet brothers, you, Edward, and Rupert, oh, we have three, return to the family home in the heart of the Sussex countryside with their wives and children. There they are joined by their parents and unmarried sister Rachel to enjoy two blissful months of picnics and childish games. So three brothers, one sister. <laughs> and all of these siblings have their own heartaches and their own problems. This is just a chronicle of their lives, I think, but it sounds really British and really cozy in a way. So I found this in a bookstore, a new edition a while back, and I asked on Instagram, do you think I would like this? Because I've never heard anyone talk about it. And a lot of people said that it kind of sounded like something I would like. So yeah, when I found this beast, the first three books, I picked it up. This is clearly secondhand, as you can see. So those were all the books that I wanted that I could find in bookshops and the rest I ordered online. So I got a pre-order in. Do I regret it afterwards? Because I had to pay international shipping and on top of that international taxes and it was not found because I basically paid double for it. But it is a science edition, so maybe it's worth it. But that is The Shadow Cabinet by Gina Dawson. This is the second book in the series and I really, like everyone else, I adore the first one. This one just came out and look, it has the pink sprayed edges. And yes, wait. It is signed, so that is not something I could ever find in the Netherlands. I don't think I regret it, but it was an expensive um, journey. <laughs> this is a low... I don't want to say low stakes. No, it's a low fantasy, but with high stakes, where we have Her Majesty's Royal Coffin, is what the series is called, I believe, which Queen Victoria, I think, started, like, fictionally, of course, to protect her, and the witches are there to protect Her Majesty. But we have a lot of the vision, and we follow four friends in their journey, in their friendship. It's fun, it's epic. I cannot wait to keep on reading, because the first book ended on a bit of a cliffhanger. Talking about writing I love, I got another. Daphne de Maurier. This is The House on the Strand. And what I did not know is that this is about time travel. I was reading the back and um, it really reminded me of The Breakthrough, which is a short story by Daphne de Maurier I read and I did not love. So I thought, okay, let's just skip this one and read other Daphne de Maurier novels. But then I read that it had time travel, which is one of my favorite fantasy tropes. So I decided to buy it anyway. <laughs> this is about a scientist, I think, or a professor researching a new drug and then he is transported into the 14th century, which sounds fascinating. And I think it is also, of course, the house on the strand. So we have a creepy house as well. I love Daphne de Maurier. I will pick this up when I feel like it or when a CBR board tells me to. <laughs> Another author I've been wanting to try more of because the one novel I read by them I really really loved and that is Dodie Smith. I read I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith and I love that and this is The Town in Bloom which I think is about a woman who works in a theater, which sounds like something I would really, really enjoy. It's about a young girl who arrives in London, intent to becoming an actress. She bluffs and charms her way into the engrossing affairs of the Crossway together. She meets handsome actor manager Rex and young stage director Bryce. When dealing with the effects of first love, she makes a lot of difficult choices. Only when a reunion lunch makes her reflect on these does she realize how powerful that shared summer affected them all. 
It sounds kind of like coming of age, but in a way that I will really enjoy because I really enjoyed it in I Captured a Castle. It's not usually something I go for anymore because I read too much of it when I was myself coming of age. But I really want to see more by Dodie Smith because the books she wrote seem so different from each other. If you've seen my last video, I did the Women's Prize vlog and it was one book I was really disappointed that wasn't on the shortlist because I really want to read it. So I just ordered it anyway. That is the Bandit Queens. This is about a woman in India and every Everyone thinks that she has murdered her husband, but I believe she has not. But she lets people believe that she has just to have a reputation that protects her. And I think then a lot of women come to her for help with their husbands. This sounds like so much fun. I've heard great reviews for this one. A lot of people seem to really enjoy it. And it sounds like a premise I will just eat up. <laughs> it says a fresh take on a feminist revenge thriller, which acknowledges the unfortunate status quo for women everywhere and shows us that female connections and friendships are what carry us through the darkest and absurdity of life. Someone outside, someone called my husband, is cleaning the gutter, so I will see you when he is finished. Okay, I have only two more books to show you, so bear with me as people are cleaning the gutters uh, on the background. I got another myth retelling because I just love them and it is Kayei, which is an Indian myth retelling. I think it's quite heavy on the fantasy element as well. I know very little about it. All I know is that someone on YouTube raved and raved about this book and I was like, I like what you say, I will buy it. I really love myth retellings, but I'm getting slightly tired of the fact that everything is a Greek myth retelling. So when this was an Indian myth retelling, I thought let's give it a go. We follow a princess, a daughter of a king, and she watches her mother um, as she is banished. She goes from a princess that's supposed to marry into a warrior, but when evil from her childhood story threatened her role, the path she has forged closes with the destiny the gods have chosen for her family. Sounds incredibly epic. The recommendation someone gave this book just really made me want to buy it. If you've read it, let me know how you enjoyed it. And then the last book that I also got for a vlog, but I've been interested in reading this for a while, but that is The Daughter of the Moon Goddess, which I know this has a lot of more prettier editions, but I just got the cheapest one I could find. So this is a fantasy series. I think this is the first in a duology that we follow a character that is raised on the moon and then the celestial emperor exiled her mother from stealing the elixir, the elixir of immortality. It says that the main character's magic flares and then she is discovered. She is forced to flee her home, leaving her mother behind. Is this YA? I think it is YA. It sounds very adventurous. I've heard so many mixed things about this. Some people seem to really, really love it. Other people seem to be disappointed by it. This also sounds very mythical, very fairy tale esque So I think I will adjust my expectations to that. But yeah, I've been enjoying fantasy so much, which is the reason that I got a few fantasies. These are the fantasies I got. And yes, when I read fantasy, I like to read <laughs> about um, adventurous women, because isn't that just the dream? I almost forgot, but my brother and I also went to a bookstore and he said that I could pick out books and he treated me to a few books. I got The Marriage Portrait, which I read and loved, but I also got this. This says Gwen and Art are not in love by Lex Croucher. This is a queer retelling of the Arthurian legend, which sounds really, really fun. I like the author Lex Croucher. She writes very slow historical romance. It's a tad too slow sometimes, but I think this book is not as big as her other novels. I think this is a bit younger and I feel like her writing feels very young so I will really enjoy it when the characters actually kind of match the age of her writing style, I think. And I think both Gwendolyn and Arthur are supposed to be getting married of course because we know their love story but I think they're both gay so it sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like something I will truly truly enjoy. Holy guacamole! These are all the books that I bought. If you have any strong feelings on any of these books please let me know. I would love to get hyped up for the books I have been buying and thank you again so much for watching my videos. Thank you for watching the ads because that really really helps me. I don't make a lot of money on YouTube because of course my channel is quite small but I do get a little bit of money every now and then. I think half of this whole was paid through YouTube. So a big big thank you to all of my subscribers and to all of you watching because um, I spent quite a lot of money on making vlogs and buying books for vlogs and this is really really helpful. Again thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a lovely lovely day or evening and I hope to see you in another video. Doei!